Hi everyone, let's talk about inheritance and Punnett squares. Now you're all probably aware that we inherit our DNA from our parents. And we have 23 pairs of chromosomes in every cell of our body except our red blood cells. 22 of these pairs of chromosomes are called autosomal and one pair is called our sex determining chromosomes. Now in this video we're going to talk about how we can inherit our DNA and therefore inherit traits from the autosomal chromosomes. And we're talking about Mendelian inheritance, which is quite a simplistic way of inheriting traits. So remember, I, if I were to take just a cell from my body and take the chromosomes out, I'm going to have two chromosome one. I'm also going to have two chromosome two and two chromosome three and so on. But let's just focus on chromosome one, for example. So you can see here, I've got one chromosome one that I got from my mother, one chromosome one that I got from my father. And we know that chromosomes are just condensed packets of DNA. And that if we unravel this DNA, there's going to be discrete segments of DNA that make genes. And these genes encode for proteins and proteins do all the stuff in our body, including giving us certain traits, making us look the way we look. But because we have two chromosomes of each one, we're also going to have two copies of every gene. So I've taken just a gene at random here that I'm going to call gene W, the, and because I've got two, one from mum, one from dad. And so if you have a look, what I'm going to have is a small W, and it's just a random letter that I chose, small W that represents that gene from mum, and a small W that represents that gene from dad. And they're identical, right? They're identical. That means the nucleotides or the DNA sequence looks exactly the same for mum and for dad. And they're both therefore denoted as little w's. Now in actual fact, this gene is going to be transcribed and translated into a protein. And this protein is going to be responsible for whether I have a straight peak of my hairline or a V-shaped peak called a widow's peak. And two little w's actually represents no widow's peak, a straight line. And that's what I've got. So I've got two little w's that represent two copies of these genes. These two copies is called my genotype. The genotype is the sequence of, I, uh, sequence of DNA I have for a particular gene at a particular location. That's my genotype. It can be translated into a phenotype. That means the way I look, whether it's a widow's peak or not. Okay. Now, I've drawn the two little w's here. Let's just say I've now found my partner and I'm going to sexually reproduce with that partner to produce offspring. That means my partner will also have chromosome one from mum and dad, two copies, which means they're going to have two copies of gene W as well. And they may have two small copies of W or they may find that they have one of those genes. Let's just say from mum, it's a big W. Now this big W, for example, may just mean one or a couple of the nucleotides in that DNA is a little bit different. So that means their genotype is big W and little w. Mine was little w and little w. Now what this means in this case is that the big w is representing a widow's peak and the little w is representing no widow's peak, right? Now here's the thing. You can inherit genes either in a dominant fashion or recessive fashion. So a dominant fashion means you only need one copy of that gene to manifest the phenotype. Recessive inheritance means you need two copies of the gene to manifest the phenotype. Now with a widow's peak, right, the V at the front, that's dominantly inherited. So you only need one copy and there it is right there. My wife or my partner has that dominant copy. There you go. So if we were to produce offspring, what would be the possible outcomes for genotype for the offspring? Well, we could have a combination of my wife's, because again, remember, they get one chromosome from me and one chromosome from my wife. So what's the possible combinations? They could get the big W and little w, big W from my wife, little w from me, or big W, little w again, or little w, little w, or little w, little w. And I told you that widow's peak is dominantly inherited. You only need one copy of the big version here, big gene, in order to get or manifest the widow's peak. What's the possible combination or percentage? Well, 50% of our offspring, statistically, will have a widow's peak. 50% will not. Okay? Let's just change this a little bit. Right? Now, 
Another point is that when you have two of the same copies like I do here, that's called being homozygous, so same copies. Having two different copies like my wife or partner, that's heterozygous. So what if my wife was homozygous for two big copies? What's the possible outcome? Well, big W, little w, that's the same. Big W, little w, that's the same. Big W, little w, that's going to be different. Big W, little w, that's going to be different. What you're going to find is that all possible combinations of our offspring will be heterozygous, but because it's dominantly inherited, they will all have a widow's peak because they all have that one dominant copy. They only need that one, right? Does that make sense? Recessive inheritance is different because you need two copies to manifest the phenotype. In this case, it's going to be the phenotype of the straight or flat hairline. And you need two of these lowercase copies. So any offspring that contains two lowercase copies of this gene is going to be recessively inherited and it's going to manifest with the phenotype of a flat hairline. Again, single copy here of this gene of the uppercase, dominantly inherited, you only need one to manifest that V, that widow's peak. Hopefully this makes sense. You need to make sure that you understand the definitions of chromosome, DNA, gene, protein, dominantly inherited, recessively inherited, homozygous and heterozygous, all important terms to understand inheritance and Punnett squares.